Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. I am Joseph F. Alsis, Addiction Master on Twitter and most social media. You can check the description for links. I'm going to be talking about 10 breakthrough technologies for 2020. I did a previous podcast on five medical innovations in 2020. So I thought I would do the top 10 breakthrough technologies for 2020. This article is from Forbes. I'll put the link in the description as always. It's by Bernard Marr. It's the time of the year when the MIT Technology Review releases its biggest breakthrough technologies for the year. These are technologies that are expected to have widespread consequences for human life in the coming year. Uh, so I guess it's MIT Review. I'll read the article word for word. I might stop here and there. I always fuck up words. I apologize in advance. I will sometimes give my thoughts, and then at the end, we'll wrap it up. Here's a rundown of the amazing technologies for 2020. 1. Satellite Mega Constellations The impetus behind satellite mega constellations is the goal to provide every corner of the planet with high-speed internet. Satellite mega constellations are the solution to banish spotty Wi-Fi signals and cellular connections, while enabling global connectivity for nearly anyone on the planet. These satellite mega constellations will also litter space and dramatically increase the number of satellites in orbit very quickly. Without a set of international rules and regulations governing how industry leaders such as SpaceX, OneWeb, Amazon, Telesat operate. This technological breakthrough could result in chaos. So right away, this is great. What a benefit, right? But space has enough junk in it. I saw an article I read, and it was about coming up with innovations to clean up the debris in space. And they came up with like the top three. And maybe I'll do another podcast on that if I can find it again. I flagged some of these articles in the past, and I come by them, and I open up my notepad to check to see what podcast I'll do, but it could be a real problem, but this will solve that make the world one connective type thing. We'll see how that pans out. Number two, tiny AI. It is now possible for powerful artificial intelligence algorithms to run from our phones and other consumer devices without needing to talk to the cloud. With tiny AI, researchers shrink the size of existing AI models through a process called knowledge distillation without losing any of the algorithm's capabilities or performance speed. The benefits of having access to AI algorithms from our devices include not experiencing latency because there is no communication with the cloud, and there are less privacy issues. Google, IBM, Apple, and Amazon are leaders with this technology. So, hmm, tiny AI. You know, it reminds me of, like, uh, Star Trek, and you, you'd always ask well, how they communicate in space uh, so quickly, and they have subspace buoys that um, make it so there's no, not a lot of lag in communicating with, you know, from planet to planet, but it just reminded me of that. Three, AI discovered molecules. It is a nod to the power of humans and machines collaborating. Scientists are using AI to discover molecules that can have an amazing impact on healthcare. Recently, machine learning was used to identify a powerful new type of antibiotic. By the way, this is highlighted, it's a link. When you look at the article. This is the first time AI was able to identify a completely new kind of antibiotic from scratch. It is extremely expensive to develop a new drug in part because it's a challenge to identify molecules. With AI on the job, millions of molecules can be evaluated quickly and, effect and effectively. That sounds amazing. First time. I'm going to open up that link too. Maybe I'll do a podcast on that. I love, you know, catching up and looking forward and then seeing the fruition of these things. 
but AI discovered molecules. That sounds mind-blowing. Four. Quantum Supremacy. Dun, dun, dun. That's going to be my new character name. While we are likely five to ten years away from achieving quantum supremacy, when a quantum computer can outperform a classical computer, Google claimed it had already achieved this milestone with its Sycamore quantum processor. By the way, this is also a link. It'll lead you to another article. Sycamore was able to determine a set of randomly distributed numbers in 3 minutes and 20 seconds. The company estimated it would take a classical computer 10,000 years to complete this task. Wow. While this feat is impressive, they acknowledge that we are years, if not decades, away from having a quantum computer that can solve problems we're interested in solving. Those problems that classical computers can't manage. I'll tell you right now, that number right there just blows my mind. You got a, a program problem that the quantum computer can do in 3 minutes and 20 seconds. And a classical computer, 10,000 years. I mean, the leaps, to, that is insanity. When you talk about the breakthrough of uh, being able to read our DNA strings and how long it would take for humans to unfold it in paper and read it, like, this is just uh, amazing. Five, climate change attribution. As a result of improved computer processing power, scientists are now able to attribute the role of climate change in severe weather events. This knowledge helps us figure out how to prepare for future events as well as give evidence to hold governments or corporations responsible for damage done by severe weather events caused by climate change. Climate change attribution informs a con conversation and climate litigation that is becoming more prevalent as climate change causes weather events that result in property and lives lost. This is going to be important this is one of those things like you had to change it from uh, global warming, you know, you have to get these new names on it. Is this inner fight between people saying, look, Earth has gone through this, it's nature, we go up, we go down, emissions, all these numbers, they don't mean nothing. I think partly true, but there are parts we can do and fix to assure that our futures are better. Yes, we're going to have to use uh, different types of energy. We're going to have to come up with new ways to uh, recycle or treat our environment better. It's just better for us. So this argument about, oh, we don't do as much as cow farts. And blah, blah. We know certain things are bad. We know oil pipelines and things like that can get into the water. They can ruin ec ecosystems. There are certain laws and criteria you know, all these protections to make sure that they're done right if you have to do them. So there is a balance there. But climate change has to be addressed as good, proper science. And more power to them for this. It needs to be treated a little more seriously. Number six, anti-aging drugs. While the fountain of youth might still elude us, we're getting closer to having anti-aging drugs on the market. Many different diseases such as cancer, dementia, and heart disease, could be improved or prevented if we can slow down the aging process. These drugs would target a natural aging process in the body. There's already been some success with these drugs in human tests. Now, this one's a little vague, doesn't have a link, but I did do some reading here and there. It's like saying, you know what, let's fix this problem, and then we can it literally hold off the other problems right so if you could stop someone at 50 from aging to 70 in 20 years give them you know that you know whatever framework will make up that 50 to 70 will be like going from 50 to 55 you might be able to fix these things and get ahead of them slow them down i think that's great i'm all for anti-aging drugs put it in my weed and i'll be fucking 50 for the rest of my life seven Unhackable Internet As recent news reports convey, the internet we use today is vulnerable to hackers. 
There are people working on creating the first quantum internet, which would be completely secure from hackers. One of the organizations working to achieve this unhackable internet is the Delft University of Technology, which is expected to complete a quantum internet between Deft, Delft, Delft and The Hague later this year. The basis of quantum internet entanglement ensures security. It's physically impossible to eavesdrop when two users are on an entangled network. Whoa, okay. So we got quantum computers and, you know, unhackable internets. This will be nuts. This will, like, solve a lot of issues, especially um, in the more commonplace area of discussion. You know, it's one thing to say, you know, misinformation and get into memes and all that stuff, but information, important stuff being hacked is always going to be one of those governing uh, problems that has to be addressed. So we'll see what happens there. Eight, digital money. The use of physical cash continues to decline as digital currencies grow. Digital money always, oh, digital money only exists in digital form. And, has, and this has big ramifications for financial privacy. Along with benefits such as instantaneous transactions, it might also mean transacting through a new intermediary or cutting out traditional intermediaries altogether. In the case of cryptocurrencies using blockchain technology, the money supply is decentralized and can come through various sources. Digital currency technology has the potential to splinter the global financial system. Now, this is interesting. I had a conversation a couple months ago about getting into this type of area. I've never been into stocks and that type of, uh, you know, that type of thing. But I have looked into a um, potential of just like buying in Crypto uh, currency, whatever that is, uh, you know, whatever the fuck they're calling it these days. It's like three major ones. When you go to PayPal, it lets you uh, buy things in, uh, you know, certain cryptocurrencies. There's like three major ones. But in any way, it was interesting because I was just looking into it myself. Like, hey, you know what? What does this look like? What are the technologies? It's a little scary, though, looking into it like money digitally. It's like that feeling as a gamer when you're paying money to get digital coins in a game it's just like it is a weird feeling there and i don't know we'll see where this is going but i don't know how i'm not educated enough to know or even allude to how it will splinter the global financial system i don't know nine hyper personalized medicine Imagine you can get a drug that was customized for a rare disease or genetic mutation. This capability is no longer only a figment of someone's imagination. It's possible. When medicine is tailored to the exact needs of a single patient, it will make treatments and cures possible for ailments that went untreated in the past. Hyperpersonalized medicine will bring hope to many who suffered from incurable diseases. Very short, no links in it. But I will say that I've read a couple of things and they were getting very close to breaking the secret of the placebo effect. And what this will do is this will aid in general medicine in I think this fashion. So let's say you go to your doctor for aspirin, right? He's going to give you an aspirin tailored for you. And that aspirin will make the headache go away. Like things will work and when you apply it to this and specific things, I think that's what it's getting towards, a hyper-personalized medicine. It's like, you know what? We can code you. We can find out so much about your body and information. We can tailor these medicines, vaccines, or cures for you personally. My thing on the um, placebo effect is maybe a little not correlated so much or directly connected, but it was something that just occurred to me just now that I was uh, trying to keep up on that because it's really interesting to me. Uh, what was that? Nine, right? All right, so 10. Differential privacy. Differential privacy will be used in the 2020s U.S. Census. 
the largest scale application to date. Differential privacy allows organizations to collect and share aggregate information about users from data that was submitted or gathered while keeping the identities of the individuals private. The goal is to maximize the use of the data while not harming the individual's privacy. With differential privacy, the raw data cannot be accessed by data scientists or, data ma or database managers. Differential privacy gives organizations a way to solve the privacy problem as well as build trust. And that's a big thing. Uh, being the last one, it's not much I'm educated in, but it is a growing concern when you're using Facebook and Twitter. I understand the dangers of social media, maybe more than others. And I have a, uh, I don't know, I have a, maybe a protected um, mindset going in. So for me, Facebook is family. I want to see my cousins grow. I want to see their children, my nephews. That's it. Get into an argument here and there because someone's posting bullshit. Fine. Twitter, yeah, promote my channel. I'm going to do a podcast. See some things from around the world. It's, it's important to me. I don't do Instagram, things like that. And you're looking at your privacy being used everywhere. Every phone call, every, uh, you know, thing that happens and you're like, oh, where did you get my number? How did you? All this data is being shared. And this is a real good way. Let's make a way where, okay, this has to happen. You're going to take this information. Make it so no one can dive into it and find things out. You hear all these stories, too, about, um, oh, I just mentioned something, and now my feed is showing things, and it's coincidence and things like that. But we know how Google works. We know how they use their search patterns, and, um, you know, it's more it's getting tailored to you as an individual who's using the computer. All this information is a database. It's a currency. It's, you know, it's, I think... Uh, it's going to be super important to keep all that private. And it's a big thing even when you talk to your friends and people who aren't so into these things. A great concern is about my privacy. You know, it's not like me where I'm like, hey, you posted a fucking fake article three times in a row. And after the first time you told me something. So now I'm going to tease you. Now I'm going to bother you about it. This is, hey, you know, I want to see what my nephews are doing, my kids in different countries. I want to, you know, maybe use a, um, some of the groups they use and they do uh, Zoom meetings and stuff. I think it's going to be important. So those were the 10 technological breakthroughs for 2020. And I think it's really, according to MIT, but it's a Forbes website. Like I said, I'll put the link in the description. I'm excited about a couple of them. The satellite, mega constellations, really get that, um, you know, sci-fi geek in me going, but we are putting a lot of shit in space, so that always concerns me. There's a, I don't know if it's a equation or, a, or some kind of mathematical formula that if a certain disaster happens, it might make space travel nil for a long time. Because right now we don't have the process to like throw up a net, catch everything and drag it out. Okay, let's clean out the pool. It's really hard. One of the things I saw was an ion device superheated things it was like a ring and if something passed through the ring it gets disintegrated or something you know and there are other ways to i think a space arm is going to be grabbing things soon they made a special one so they are looking into it but super fast whatever and you're going to get conspiracy theories oh my god the 5g conspiracy look if there's legitimacy to them fine i'll look at it i'll read these fucking i'll go down a rabbit hole once in a while because some things are important like yeah i don't want you know, transmitter boxes are going to radiate me or cause fucking diseases and stuff. But once you start looking down the rabbit hole and you look for the indications as somewhat informed opinion, you'll realize it's all bullshit. Tiny AI, AI discovered molecules to me, you know, give me more. Give me way, give me a lot of links in these articles. I just want to know more. And of course, you got Google, IBM, Apple, just Amazon, just fucking of course leading the industry in this shit i do see the article i'm going to read and a new type of antibiotic and this is just that blows my mind the quantum computers i could see you know hey 
it skips my mind in 10 years from now someone's like holy shit and then it's like that thing you have to buy for like seven thousand fucking dollars or something and it can run a country or something i could see that happening so yay for quantum supremacy climate change has to be important even if it's not um given the uh respect it's due get it out there in discourse get the talk out there and just like psychology and things that were legitimately criticized as being hokey hokey and bullshit the same thing you can't let these environmental nut jobs skewer the numbers just to get their political slant and their agenda you have to look at it you know from a neutral position and you know weigh the pros and cons but there is something we have to look to we have to make sure our oceans to our air to the you know people in our world that we live in it's not to say that we don't have enough room because i think you could fit everybody in one state of america everybody in the world it's more about food and clean water we still have fucking problems in flint this is like how can this be happening people getting sued well, let's get climate change at least in the uh, discussion more treated seriously, not this anti science thing. Anti aging drugs, give them to me. Where are they? I'll go now. I don't know what time it is. I'll just fucking go. Unhackable internet? Yeah, I guess so. But to me, it's like I grew up in, I'm in Brooklyn, New York. I grew up here. It was always, if you have a car, if someone wants to steal it, they eventually can steal it. There's nothing you're going to be able to do. You do the best. You get the good security. You get your uh, fucking bar that goes across the steering wheel. Whatever. Take your battery out. Take the tires off. I mean, they can get a flatbed truck. They put it on. It, you're gone. It's gone. Same thing with the internet. But if this is true, it's like, you know what? Only these six experts in the world who know about it will be able to hack it. But okay. I'm interested. Digital money new to me i'm just getting into it started to ask my friend who has a little bit more experience with it it's more like you know what i think his advice was if you have a uh, 150 dollars in paypal you know what buy 50 dollars of cryptocurrency here and there or you know spend a little money and then see how it works you don't have to dive into a stock exchange things and watch things go back and forth and keep an eye on things I'm, that's not me but hey a little extra money in my paypal can i go Buy a little cryptocurrency and see how it fluctuates. Hey, I guess I could look into that. Hyperpersonalized medicine. I did a correlation. I did read some articles, but this seems um, really plausible. And pretty soon, if you ask me, you could see medicine, you know, prescribed for you. And even the general things. Like I said, uh, you go into a booth, it scans you. You know, whatever, three days later whatever it is a week the doctor says okay you know, what do you need oh you know what i need uh i got back pain okay we'll take these uh and whatever aspirins or tylenols and it's specifically me for you i think it's gonna be awesome differential privacy more of like i said goes in with the unhackable internet but hey we got to do it right keep everybody's information safe so that's it as a recap hope everybody enjoys this this is Something I'm going to try to do, I guess, if I keep doing this every year, you know, so next year I'll do uh, top five innovations, medical innovations for 2021, and I'll do top 10 or whatever breakthrough technologies for 2021 and keep like a little running clicker on these things and keep the, um, you know, opinion informed more. Everybody be well. I hope you're safe out there. Good luck with everything. Everything seems to be getting better, but there is little pockets of nonsense going on hey florida get your shit together stop being fucking assholes this is why the conspiracy nonsense and shitty presidents spread information you got people going to fucking spring break not giving a shit infecting everybody and you have to make fucking laws of emergency whatever powers get it together people my best to everybody be well